to me. It's just visibly wrong. Yeah, no. It matters to me as well, don't worry. It's so annoying. How do you even get a triangle thing here? With that angle 34 degrees. That is impossible to have a triangle like that. Exactly. Yeah. But Nick, I'm not worried. Uh -huh. And uh, do you like Flynn? Thank you. We began. So uh, today, sine rule. I think it's even easier than the cosine rule. Um, so we'll crunch this out, and then we should have some time to either work on your folio, or if you're done with that, then you can proceed with some problem solving with sine and cosine rule. Okay. Just want to point out here. Sine rule is non-right angled triangles involving two sides and two angles. When we were doing cosine rule, they had three sides and one angle. Problems involving three sides and one angle. Here, two sides and two angles. Um, there's a couple of ways to represent it. It depends what we're trying to find, if we're trying to find an angle or if we're trying to find a side. So basically, sine of A divided by side A is going to equal sine of B divided by side B and sine of C divided by sine C. And remember, I just said, let's always stick with A, and B and C are arbitrary, it doesn't matter where you assign them. Um, and then of course, like, um, let's, let's just provide an example of what I mean here. If we've got, if we've got um, two divided by three is equal to um, uh, four divided by six, and obviously this is a true statement, um, if I flip this fraction, and I'm going to have 3 on 2, and I flip this fraction, okay, obviously it's going to maintain its equality. Okay, so that's what we've done. We've flipped all of the sides, we've inverted them, and so it still maintains that equality. So let's get into these problems, how we're going to solve them. All right. So firstly, we've got angle A here, so we're trying to find an angle. So Ruben, so we need to make sure we label the corresponding side A. Here, this is angle B. All right, I'm just going to go A and B. Up vertical, and this is side B. And so then we'll make our statement. Now, if we're trying to find an angle, I recommend we use this formula, all right, any of these. If we're trying to find a side, we can use any of these, but ultimately it does not matter, okay? There'll just be a bit of extra algebra involved. Okay, so we're finding an angle, so we're gonna make that statement, that side A divided by A. Now, side A corresponds with 15, and that's equal to side B, so that's sine of 34 divided by 17, divided by side B, okay? Now this equation, I'm rearranging, I want to get this variable A by itself. So I'm just going to multiply first both sides by 15. So I'm going to move the 15 up here, and we've got this sine 34 on 17. Okay, at this stage, if you wanted to, you could calculate it to a few significant figures, but we want to... Um, maintain that through. And so then to get A by itself, it's inverse sine, and then whatever our answer is here, let's plug that in. So I'll calculate that to degrees, make sure you calculate it in degrees. Questions about that? Right. So with B then, in B we're finding a unknown side. And so I've said we should maybe use one of these, just less algebra involved. And so this is our unknown. So I'm going to describe that as A, that corresponds to A, which means this is angle A. Here's B, which means this is side. Okay, and then we make the statement that corresponds with the formula. We have x on top of sine 84 equals 21 on top of sine 17. Okay, now we're trying to solve for x, which means we're going to multiply both sides by sine 84. We've got x is Like that, and then times sine 
and that's what we crunch. Seventy one point four three. Oh, excuse me. Here we found an angle. This is not degrees, this is units. We're not doing units. Okay, so probably a little bit easier than the than the cosine rule. Um, just I reckon just stick with A and B. Find an angle, find an inside. Any questions? Okay, so that same as last time I gave you a booklet, I said you're responsible for your own learning. Okay. Now I might talk about that now quickly. Alright. So let's say I've given you this booklet. I'll just get everyone to pay close attention here. I've given you this booklet. And there's like probably, there's like 30 questions that you could do, okay? And I've said, this skill, I want you to master this skill. So that means my recommendation would be that you do all of it, okay? Because then that, I've said, I've given you enough problems to master the skill. However, if you think you don't need to do all of it in order to master the skill, that is your prerogative. You have the capacity to make that decision. And so what I would advise you to do then is just do a few of them. But make sure you do some of the ones later on as the difficulty tends to compound. It tends to get a bit harder the further down you go. Okay? Um, now some people don't like that because they like to just do every single one. And if that's the case, I encourage you to do that. Okay, it just takes a bit more time. If you want to be time-wise and efficient as a student, you've got to say, what are the areas I need to work on? Once you've mastered a skill, there's no point doing it over and over and over again. Waste of time. Okay, and so the further you get into senior school, the more and more you're going to have to be deciding what areas you need to work on. So let's get into sign rule. Um, I'll come around and see everybody. What's the time? What's the time? 